so if I'm looking rough, it's because uh, I've been up all night. That um, man, this night was as bad as the night she had that thing stuck, the pine cone stuck in her broken nail. Oh my God, last night. <laughs> Oh my god, the worst headache. I'm so tired. And um and you know, like around midnight, you know, I was really feeling really beat down. I was like, Jesus, I've been on bubbles twenty four hours. I'm so tired. I just wanna sleep. And um, you know, and if I'm left in the quiet for a few minutes, I can doze off like really super fast. But then um she startles me awake, startles me awake, startles me awake. And, um, I, I'm pretty sure though, I got to take some nap yesterday, but maybe it was only for like an hour or something. And then, um, and then I think we went to bed she was staying up and staying up, man. She was not going to sleep, not going to bed at all. She was going in and out, in and out. I was like, fuck. And then I don't know if it was like 9.30 or something. And then she did. And then at 10.30, she was outside, got, I think, like an hour of sleep then. But then it's just been up. And every time I've tried to lay down, like if she goes to sleep for a few minutes, I'll try and lay down and go to sleep. Oh, no. As soon as I get comfortable and get relaxed and I feel like I'm going to doze off, she's up and... And I think it is her hips. I think it's her hips or her back or something that is bothering her. Um... And I just know the other day, whenever she's feeling good, she gets so active. And the other day we went, um, she was at the neighbors and Bert was out on top of this little plastic shed thing. And Stella could smell him up there. So she would start jumping up. I don't know where she thinks she's going to get fucking Bert. Bert. And even if she got him, Bert would smack the shit out of her. It's like, dude, leave that fucking Bert alone. And, um, but she was jumping up and she doesn't usually get on two feet and jump up like that. So as I'm thinking, she just hurt herself. Like she gets so excited, but like, um, she's just eating way more. Like I, she's eating every couple hours. Like she's eating four or five times a day. So, you know, it's not definitely not the end of her life or anything. <laughs> she just gets, um, when she's uncomfortable, she just is whiny. And, um, I don't know. I feel like when I came home from surgery, you know, and I'm wailing and whoa, I was doing it some last night too, because she was wanting me to pat her and pat her and pat her and pat her to the point where this muscle over here, and I don't know if it's just totally spazzing out or something because, um, you know, it was like stretched out and then it collapsed down and it seems like I always get like nerve things, but anyways, there's like weird things. Like you can push over here and get stabbed in the nipple and it's like, oh my God. And this one is, of course, my right hand is the one giving me so much trouble. And so at some point I was like, oh my God, it was just, oh my God, I can't believe how bad it was hurting. And uh, so I was like, oh, <laughs> but I think when I was first, she was just quiet because it's like, dang, she's doing way worse than me. But then once I started doing better, she's like, okay, now I can get back to it. <laughs> I've got some whining to do myself. So, um, but I did figure out how to walk her. I was super excited because I was, um, she's just been harassing me and harassing me and harassing me about taking her for a walk. <laughs> it's just, oh God, she's something. And, um, and she will pout and she'll have a fit. And so I kept, I even asked the doctor, even though I knew, even if he said, oh yeah, because at first he did say, oh yeah, you can go walk your dog. And then I said, well, you know, I worry because uh, English Mastiff, they can tear a muscle just regular. If she jolts and I'm holding that, that's going to rip that muscle, I feel like. And he's like, oh yeah, don't, don't go walk her. Don't go walk her for like another month at least. And so, um. I was stressing. I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? And um, I was, the things I wish that I would have uh, thought ahead, like if you're planning uh, to be, you know, out of commission for a while, I wish that I would have got it set up for a house cleaner. Somebody who would come in and do the cleaning for me and a dog walker, those things. But it did push me to think 
more deeper about it. And so I, um, I remember it, I had a, a, this longer tie thing. I, I remember I had two, but I couldn't think of where the other one was, but I had this one, but it's like wire, this really heavy thing. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll put it around my waist. And then that gives a long thing for her to pull on. So if she pulls, I, you know, it, it won't have any problems. So we went and we did a walk and it was kind of a pain because it kept slipping down and stuff and it was really heavy and it was pulling her harness. It was really heavy. And, um, but it, it worked out pretty well. And so then I was like, I wonder if I could fit my leash because there has, um, you know, a lot of these leashes have all these other kind of buckle here, try this buckle, you know, doing all these other things. And so, and I had seen that there is, um, some leashes now that are being marketed around your waist. So you got hands-free dog walking, so you can make sure you're on your phone the whole time, I guess, but, um, probably not for everybody, but I, I, that was in my head. I kept seeing that in my head. And so I came back from that walk and I tried to do her leash and I adjusted it and stuff and I can fit it around my waist and still give her enough to walk. And so I was like, hell yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. And so we went out and did a little walk with that and then came back and then we did another one in the afternoon. And it was super sunny in the morning. Like I was all dressed and bundled because it's so fucking cold. The weather is whacked. And, um, and then the sun was so bright and it was also really, really clear. And then over when we walked down some, there was a big planet. I'm not going to say it was the moon because I don't think it was the moon, but there's a big planet you could see up in the sky. And so I was like, that's wild. Cause it's just like right out there in the open and they aren't spraying it or anything. And then, um, and I was thinking, well, probably a lot, a lot of people aren't even looking up. And then, uh, except for those of us who already are, but then, um, there started being these big clouds. And so, so I think that they were spraying or maybe it's when the weather changes that whatever's up there starts changing, you know, cause it's like a science experiment. And so when the weather or the temperature changes, that changes the chemical compound or whatever. And, um, you know, cause it can change stuff more into, the density and more into gases and waters and stuff. But anyways, so the, there was all these big clouds and I was thinking, Oh, see when the sun starts moving and going over towards that, then they start covering it. Maybe they figure, well, you know, if people look up at the sun, they don't want to see it or something. I'm not sure. But anyways, I've seen it a few times not covered in it's bigger than the moon. So I bet then there's a lot of people saying the moon's moving, but I heard that the moon wasn't even around it. Like, I don't know this whole fucking Truman show. It's just like, uh, you know, a bunch of bullshit and it's all just to wake us up. And I just feel like it's not worth getting really caught up in anything, like in any of the arguments, like people who want to argue about flat earth or whatever. It's like, it's a bunch of realms. Like, yeah, it's a stationary plane and we were lied to and we were told we were spent. We all bought into this thing. They told us, even though we were all going like, you know, this doesn't seem right. Why don't I feel like I'm upside down? Why do you see the moon if it's supposed to be somewhere else? Like there's a lot of questions, but they just continued the narrative. And there is, um, I just seen this video where there's another project that is by the three letter that starts with a C. And it's called Adam and Eve Project. And I guess it doesn't have a lot of stuff about it. But it is their plan after whatever this catastrophe of a, of a certain group of people that they're going to take to start the world over. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Maybe that was their plan or something. But I think it's going to... It's weird because I feel like it's going to be more like... Um, like there's going to be disasters. Like there's going to be some disasters over here for sure over on the West Coast. I mean, there's already so much shit going. Like even that uh, there was some big fire on a bridge 
yesterday. I don't remember which place it was because there was also a train derailment. There was also uh, in the, like Michigan or something. There's an anomaly going on. And there's all sorts of stuff going on in the college stuff. Then they were arrested a bunch of people. Like one college, they arrested like 100 people. They showed like 10 or something on the um, their mug shots and stuff. It was quite clear. It was very unlikely that they are American and they were definitely not college students. They were older and they looked way more like Middle Eastern or um, I don't know. They de definitely did not look um, but that is the thing is these people don't realize that the war that they've brought here, <laughs> they've ushered it in. Come on, guys, we're on your side. <laughs> well, we're not on their side. We're on your side. But, and, and it's like and it, the twists and the turns. And then they're putting on their hair thing. And it's like, do you know why they put those on? It's like, uh, it's, um, I don't know. It, uh, it's just wild. It's all got to play out, so and it's still going, and they're still, um, and they've got a bunch of these different universities. But I think it's, you know, to show, it's like to show the public, like the absurdity in the university and the division too. And they, they, they've got all these instigators and stuff that aren't even students, they're just there to promote this division, to create this hostile environment to I don't have a war in our fucking streets and our colleges and, you know, and the kids that are the people, it's not just kids. They're targeting kids because they had like a certain generation that they got more mind control over. And so they're definitely targeting them, but they've got a whole bunch of adults that are involved too. Like I've seen so many of these different lives and you know, there's all these people that are just SJW. And they think that they're do they're they're humanitarians. I saw this guy yesterday doing this video. Well, it was a duet. Someone was duetting this guy's video, and he's talking about. I think he was saying the Gen X and the Millennials, but the Millennials like, because my Gen, like, my older daughters are think are considered Gen X, my younger daughters are considered Millennials. And so the, um, let's see, I have two of each. And so the, um, the Gen X ones have kids, but they have a wide range too. Like they have their older kids and then they both had a, a child just recently. So they've got ones that are more grown. Like there's a big age gap in both their families. And then the other daughters, they don't plan on having kids. And so, um, this guy is saying, so, and to me, it's like, they, even if they had kids, like, how old could they be? Like, I guess if they started when they were 20, they could have 10 year olds. I guess if they started when they were 15, they could have, you know, 15 year olds. But, um, anyways, he was saying that the Gen X and uh, the millennials changed everything that they were the ones who changed everything it's like what about all of us who also changed things like we also saw, saw things broken in our families and made changes it's like why do they keep isolating this stuff why do they keep generalizing and they grab a label with all this group over here and all that group stupid but this group over here it's like how do you fucking umbrella a whole goddamn fucking group of people under that that is the thing that is driving me crazy on this man versus bear. Like, this thing just gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> like, you'd think it would just be something that would go away. No, it gets bigger. And, um, but, so, the, um, he was saying <laughs> that they have raised these wonderful kids now. And so, they're the ones who are in the university who are marching for change, who are the true humanitarians who really care about other people on this planet. It's like, what about all of us who were doing that before? Just because you weren't doing anything doesn't mean that there wasn't other people that weren't. It's like, what in the holy hell? And um, and then to me, it's like, but they are doing this blind humanitarian effort. And then you are, like, are supporting them. And that it's not even like they're not even thinking things through. 
Like they're committing crimes, big crimes, big crimes. It used to be like, like, and there's going to be some of that that's going to go down. I don't know. It's going to be like students, but that would definitely, you know, scare you straight. <laughs> like, what? This was serious? I thought we were just marching. It's like, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> let's watch. I mean, it's one thing when you're marching and the corporation's in charge, but let's see when the, when it switches. Like, that's going to change the rules. And, uh, you know, the whole thing with the corporation is it's the illusion. It's under the illusion. And so they're all, you know, marching for the, uh, this cause under this illusion or something. Oh, yeah, and I saw Joe yesterday live for a few minutes. And um, what a fucking... <laughs> he, he just is like... All this stuff that Donald really was doing, now Joe's trying to claim it. Oh, well, we're bringing manufacturing back and stuff. It's like, dude, he was already doing that. He was already bringing all this stuff back that was uh, resourced out. All this stuff that was outsourced. He was already doing that, bringing us back into being d independent. And Joe, he didn't, I mean, it's all a show. But anyways, I just can't get all caught up and watch it and stuff. It's just irritating. <laughs> like, I just got to let it play out. Like, I can't sit and watch the people get all caught up in the politics and stuff. It's like, well, whatever's going on, that's for your benefit. Because I've left the fucking building on that shit. It's, it's, I don't know, it's just ridiculous and redundant. It's absurd. And it's all just to wake people up get people to see and um let me think because there was something else that I wanted to say about something that I had skipped to go back a minute ago on the people uh millennial oh the the bear thing oh my god it is it's insane how this just keeps going and going and going but it's so much shows how people fucking generalize and stereotype. How it is totally like a man hurt me when I was a child. So therefore all men are bad. And so many women is just a repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, a man hurt me. They're all so bad. They're so bad that I just saw this guy and I shared that video. I've been sharing a bunch of good videos. I don't know if anybody wants to watch them, but I think they're good. But, um, this one was, uh, the guy was saying, um, that, uh, cause this was something that was sticking out to me yesterday too. Cause I would see these ones and now we've got these young girls like, Oh, I was sent this because I was attacked. I was, I was, you know, all this, <coughs> this stuff to just continue, continue, continue. And so I, um, <clears throat> so I did this video and said, you know, oh, a man hurt me when I was a child, so therefore all men are bad, which they were holding that video. They weren't letting it go. And then, um, and then I did another one and I said, oh, wait a minute. I was also a, a woman who hurt me. So what does that mean? And it's like, you know, I mean, most of us were hurt by both people, you know, both, most of us have been hurt by both, it may be different kinds of pain but right now i mean the amount of abuse going on by especially single moms who are struggling and falling apart the amount of abuse and murder and stuff going on with the kids it's it's insane and um and for all these girls to keep you know just focus on men are bad men are bad men are bad it's like you know that there's a lot of bad women too it's not every man's not bad it's like every woman's not bad but the badness in people is way out of balance right now. It's like, it's like they can't contain it. They can't hide it. It's like everything about you is being revealed. So your internal way of looking at things, you can't hide it. You can't pretend. And, um, you know, and if you are, like if you're going to work and you keep pretending and stuff, it's just going to get harder and harder and harder. It is uh, the energy is going to keep forcing people to be real, to be authentic, to face themselves, to see themselves. There's so many people, they have to see their own biases and stuff. 
because it holds them back. It holds you back from your learning. Like so many of these fucking lessons, like they could have been learning if they would have been paying attention. Like just to know like that the government is creating all of this chaos and you guys just jump on board. It's like, come on. <laughs> and they do it. Well, they've got so many ulterior motives. It's like all that stuff is like to be revealed to us, to show us like it's fucking shady ass shit, man. And, um, oh yeah. And this guy who had just uh, messaged me and he was telling me that he always goes and buys all his food at the farmer's market. But he decided to go get this watermelon because it looked really good at Whole Foods. So he brought it home and he ate it. And he said he has got the worst stomach ache and the worst gas he's ever had. It's like they are not, they're not, the food's not normal. It's full of some kind of toxins and stuff. And it's full of poisons and it's just overloaded. And then I just saw a thing talking about like our yogurt isn't even live culture yogurt because in other countries you have to have a certain amount and they kill ours through pasture or pasteurizing or something so there's a lot of people who think like eating yogurt is good for their gut but like fuck i mean our guts are so under attack our whole system is under attack every day and I, and I know that she was feeling inflammation so because I was feeling so uncomfortable. And then for the fucking goddamn hour I fell asleep. I, um, <coughs> I, um, I've got a tickle right here. I, I fell asleep with my head all wonky and my neck all in a crick. And, um, <coughs> God, it's very tickly. I hold on. <coughs> I don't think that's going to help it, but, um, and then I fell asleep with my neck and like a, a crick, you know? So now the whole time I've been up all goddamn night, my neck has been killing me. My fucking muscle right here has been killing me. And, um, I can't, even if she goes to sleep, like I said, for like an hour or something, I try and lay down and go to sleep real quick. And, um, I'll get her all situated, get the music all like, and I'll lay down and just start to get comfortable and she'll get up. It's like, oh my God. At some point, she's going to have to pass out because that happened last time. So then I'll hopefully get caught up on some sleep. <laughs> but, um, but I was having uh, was some kind of like shooting pains and stuff. Like, where I was like, there's got to be some kind of poison. And my nose is dripping like crazy too. Like, just drip 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 so wild because everybody's got allergies now everybody's getting diagnosed with allergies everybody's got allergies probably everybody's on allergy medicine and it's like it's fucking it's not allergies when we're all fucking have the same stuff it's a reaction to poison same like look it up it's the same kind of response and so that's you know we're all having reactions to our bodies refusing to be poison so it starts like snotting up and stuff so um well, let me think is um because there was something still with the bear um with the bear versus the oh yeah because that guy so that guy did a video and he i'll i shared it and i'll share it in this one too um i'll try sometimes i forget because it takes so long to download it but he did these stats on how many men, uh, I don't know if it's ass assault people or assault kids or assault adults or whatever, but then it is um, how many women are charged for assaulting uh, kids. And um, it's three out of every thousand of women and two out of every thousand men. And so he was making a point about you know, the women need to, the, the single moms are creating the this hostility in the young boys and creating more abusers because it, it all keeps going back. And you got to remember how this is all like this generational thing that we're in this process of learning. It's not just like one generation. 
No, it's a whole bunch of them. And the more that you can like look back with empathy and understanding and see the process of the learning and see your part, the more effective you can be in the expansion of the, of the alternative to the, the, to the lesson, to, to playing out, to redirecting the way it's going. So that is, um, uh, you know, it's, not being in judgment and being like, oh, well, you know, I wouldn't be an abuser if you went a bit, if you would have been a better mom. It is because then that mom, she also had some problem. And then the person before her had some sort of problem. And it's only becoming into our awareness now of how to link the problems and how to put them together and how to really solve situations. It wasn't even talked about when some of these people were having issues. And then we want to sit and blame them. Well, it wasn't even something that they even understood. So they just were, you know, following the program. They were just doing what everybody else was doing. Doing like what they show in the movies. Like fucking watch old movies. It's fucking whoa. Really opened your mind of the programming and how they directed society. And how they, they, they directed how we looked at each other. And how we treated each other. And uh, he always were making women overly emotional, hysterical. They couldn't handle themselves. And women went in and played these parts. That's the thing. Is women were like, oh, well, I'll play that part. Give me the money. I want fame. I want this. I want that. And we'll go in and play these parts. And not realizing that this is degrading society. This is degrading women. It's degrading how society looks at women. And it's going to have repercussions for generations. So, you know, and that is, you know, by intention, what you put out is your karmic link. So some of these people are carrying like, dragging some karmic debt behind them of how, what they did in their influence to create a direction in society in the direction it went. And it's like, that is linked to the person now, that doesn't mean like, oh, just play it safe. Don't do anything because then you're going to create uh, yourself a karma. That is, um, I mean, you got to think about eternity. And all it is is you put things out of balance. Then you got to go in and put them back into balance. And so it all, you know, depends on how you look at it. If you look at it as a punishment or you just look at it as like, okay, well, you know, that was a big lesson that everybody got to see because uh, it's, it's not just us. That's the thing. When we're learning our lessons, we still have people learning from our lessons too. We still have people who are a part of our lessons. We still have people who have left the relay, but they're standing behind us, cheering us on because we're the ones with the baton. So we have a team around us that is trying to lead us to the finish line. And so you have communication when you're paying attention. And um, you know what I just saw too? I saw this guy and he had hair. It was super long. It was really, really, really curly. And it was like, it was long as mine, only really curly. So I was like, fuck, if that hair was wet, it's probably like down to his knees or something. And it was thick. And I was like, that probably is some heavy hair. And uh, I could see cutting it, you know, some. But he cut it all off. And I was thinking, well, maybe he thought he was doing something really good by giving this hair to, uh, for women who don't have any hair. But really, I think it's part of the woman's experience to go without the hair, not take someone else's. Because there's so much more to hair. And it has, like, living memory and stuff. And there's, I don't know, there's a whole thing. Like, I think... That you, I, I, I don't think that you want to be wearing other people's hair, especially like when you don't even know what they've been through. And, um, yeah, I don't know. There's just a whole thing, but the more of this stuff will kind of play out as things expand and how we change and how we look at things. And some of this stuff, I just think it's going to be like, <clears throat> no, we're not going to wear wigs and fake hair and stuff anymore. It's going to be more natural, like 
if your hair falls out, then your body's telling you something and you need to work on yourself, not just hide so society accepts you because they think you've got hair and you don't look sick to them or something. It's like, you know, we want to make some changes. And I can get, you know, where a lot of people who have been sick and their hair's fallen out and they, you know, it's like they're holding on to something. And, you know, it's like, a, and it, it probably worked through our society for a while. But now that we're going through these changes, I think that's going to be something. Artificial, synthetic, all that kind of stuff. I think it's going to change in our clothes too. Because it's crazy how much petroleum and plastics in our clothes. And when they turn up their frequency, I swear to God, my clothes will start irritating me. Like they're like scratching and I think it's when they get the these uh, artificial, these plastics and stuff going at a certain speed. But they've got them in our clothes. They leach chemicals into us and stuff. So I think you know, a lot of stuff is going to change about our clothing. And I don't think it's going to be like about fashion, about trends and stuff. I think it would be a lot more you would go to a tailor and they would do measurements on you and come up with a... A style like they would still have design kind of experience be able to fit you and tell you what would look good on your body and come up with some outfits and stuff I think it's gonna be a lot more like you would dress to your own body style not trying to make it you know a generic style it looks good on a certain group of people it doesn't look good on anybody else but everybody else just does it because they want to be in style like, it really got absurd. I swear to God. When they brought in the low rider pants and went back down to the hip huggers. And, um, you know, I everybody was wearing hip huggers. And then you sit down and your cracky your ass is hanging out. And then all these girls started wearing their G-strings up out of them. But then it started being all of these people started just having, like wearing like they like they shouldn't have been wearing hip huggers like hip huggers when they were first you know designed it was for a certain kind of everybody was kind of skinny looking back in the 70s and stuff and maybe they had hip huggers before that but I remember them being you know I mean you see like rockers wearing them and stuff it was a lot more of a style to show kind of like your body. And then when they had all these girls, like they had a bunch of heavy set girls wearing low rider jeans. I don't know if that was all that was available, but it was like, you could find something that looked way better on you and would be way more comfortable. And they all just kept trying to wear this style. And it's so many, like I know lots of people saw people who were like, man, that does not look good on you. You should put something else on. But they all would force this look that was like, I don't know, but I think like that kind of thing is following a trend when it isn't like doesn't match you. It's like, ugh. Uh, and I even I saw it because I, it's so crazy because this one woman who is older, you know, and I, um, I thought, you know, she was a good role model, right, for older women because she was a lot more, because I had seen an ad and they were marketing an older woman just like an old granny. And this woman isn't like an old granny. She's like this city slicker lady. And, uh, you know, she's always, she's all into fashion, being out all night and stuff. And um, it's like, why aren't they marketing people like this? Like, still do your thing and be vibrant and, um, but they, you know, they show this other lady and she's got her panties up to here and big giant bra on, all her hair cut off, all totally white. It's like, and what is she, 60? It's like, is this what they're trying to get in our heads? And so anyways, and this woman though, she's in her 70s, but when this thing started happening with my hair, started changing, I have tried so much to tell certain people especially people with gray or white hair. And they're so resistant, so resistant. Like I am so much more open-minded than so many people. And, and people can make fun of you over that. Oh, you believe anything. 
well, I don't necessarily believe everything, but I'm going to have an open mind. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to think about it. I might try it, figure it out for myself. I'm not going to just believe everything and I'm not going to not believe everything. So anyways, uh, but I get so much resistance and, and to me, it's like, well, just try it. Just try it and see what happens. No, there's just met with resistance. But it is wild because as I, because I had said something to her and she was like, oh no, I love my hair. Um, I wouldn't want to change it. I don't even like how I looked with dark hair. It's <laughs> like, I, we're talking on two different languages here. But, um, but that's the thing is like, yeah. And, and uh, people can only understand what they can understand. And there is many times when you're speaking two different languages and you can't get frustrated. It's just like, okay, well, you'll figure it out. You'll learn. But it's wild because I'll see her videos and stuff. And we are going in such different directions. You know, just our whole approach and what we're trying to put out there into the world. And, you know, I'm trying to teach people to take control of their lives, take control of their lifestyle, to heal themselves emotionally, physically, to start, it's like recapturing your youth too, your vibrancy and, um, not just, you know, hide from aging and, uh, do all this artificial shit, like get wigs and, uh, I don't know the whole huge thing about letting your hair go gray. It's like the hugest fucking thing. It's like accepting your hair is gray and, uh, the, I just did. I just did that so early, on. As soon as my hair started turning gray, one of my daughters was like, "Oh, just let it go," and um, so I did. I only colored it for like a year, and it was only like <clears throat> about like this. Well, I think it was less than this when it very first started, and then it expanded. But now it's still it's reduced so much, and I think that the color is um. It keeps getting darker in with the hair. So, I don't know. I think it will definitely... Well, it will kind of just fade away. It, but it will just all of a sudden just be hard to see. Like, it'll be blended in so much. Because it just keeps going back to the other color. So, anyways. The, um, but, like, she is pushing all this, like... Sticking up. Staying with the trends. Because she was showing about going and getting these underwear even that make you have like a butt. It's like, I, I don't know. I just think there's at some point we just gotta accept ourselves. Not just try and follow trends like, oh, my butt's not good enough for society. Well, I better go buy a fake butt so I can look better. So like, so the guy walking behind me down the street is impressed with my butt. I'm like, I mean, what, what are we doing this for? And so, um, I mean, if it gives you confidence, you know, it makes you feel better. But I, I really feel like a part of my big lessons in life have been, you know, learn how to accept yourself. You know, learn how to love yourself. Don't do this artificial shit, you know. This artificial stuff that it is out of insecurity. Just learn how to appreciate yourself and love yourself. And you know, another thing too, that was on my mind too, it was, um, because I kept seeing these videos of people. Well, for one thing, they're using this filter to have the filter tell them what celebrity they look like. And most of the ones I've seen, it's all like girls and they tell them they look like men. And so it's like, why they're just scanning your face and shit people. And so that, fuck, there's a lot coming out on fucking Diddy and fucking Jaden and the fucking Will. And, oh, my God. Um, fucking nasty fucking, oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Um, but um, so they're all doing this filter. And, um, and then there's something else talking about these people that they look like celebrities or whatever and then people you know will go on and tell them well you don't look like that it's like for one thing I've been told like I look like a bunch of different people and it's whatever that person sees it could be like they just saw that person on tv and something in your face look like them and all of a sudden they think oh you look just like so and so 
It doesn't mean you automatically look like everything about this person. But, um, but like I had said before, when I was a teenager, uh, Bo Derek became popular. That movie 10, whatever year that came out, then that is when it started being like all day long, all day long, every day, all day, at least three times a day. I was told that I looked exactly, but do you, I was stopped on the street. I was stopped in elevators. I was stopped in doctors. I was stopped everywhere. Did you know you look like Bo Derek? Well, I've heard that a few times <laughs> just in the past hour. So it was all day long and I would go and I would look and look at her face and I would try and like understand like you know, and I could, t I could take a picture of me and a picture of her and I could bend it in half and put them across. And I was like, fuck, we do look alike. But, um, but I couldn't look at her and go like, oh, see, she's pretty. So I must be pretty. No, not at all. It made me more look at her like, okay, well, I think they just think like her body is good. I, I was like, I couldn't, um, see at all like it's weird because I think you just you don't see yourself how other people see you and it, it all comes from inside and not everybody thinks the same thing looks good but the um but it was something with uh it was so freaking often it was all the time it was like pushed down my throat all the time and I don't know, you know, if the universe was trying to get me to see something or understand something, but I could, I just kept thinking that I was so strange looking and I, and it's just, I felt so strange on the inside, you know, and because I can look at myself and think like, you know, you don't look perfect and nothing looks perfect about me. That's for sure. And, um, and be okay with it. But before I used to be so hard on myself. And uh, as I have uh, compassion for the people who do, you know, who are hard on themselves. Because you just look at yourself and all you can see is what's wrong. But I really feel like it's because it's comparison. Like we are always comparing ourselves to somebody else. And, and if they put somebody on trend, you know, and they put somebody on and they've got a certain body. Like they love to do that pick a certain body type, especially one that is more rare. And then they all push that. And it's like, we could all, all of a sudden have that body type. How, how could we do that? I think that there's like an average body type, you know, but another thing too, uh, I have noticed is like, if you are somebody who's trying to be healthy and so you think, well, you know, I don't want to be overweight. I want to be I want my physique to be thin. I want to be able to move and do all that stuff. I want to feel light. And people would look at that as being toxic. Like you've got a problem. You're toxic. You've got an eating disorder. And how it's so much more accepted in our society to overeat. To eat beyond what you need. That's, that's, that's a, 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 you know, approved by the general population. Because most people don't feel good about themselves. And they want everybody to stay in that with them, they feel like, well, I keep trying to lose weight and I can't lose weight. So, and if anybody who is going out and trying to lose weight or is losing weight, then they must be toxic. They're doing something wrong. And so then the whole group decides like, you've got an eating disorder. You're toxic. You need to eat more. It's like, I, I, you know, when you really start thinking about that and you start looking at it and seeing it from the other side, it is the strangest thing. It is so strange how we got like that in society to start telling people who were in shape and uh, that they were the ones who were toxic and that the people who are out of shape, that they're victims, you know, poor them, which it is like they really are basically victims to the poisons in the food because that is creating the obesity and stuff. But everything about this awakening is about this, you know, putting the brakes on, looking at things differently. And a lot of things have to do with this changing your idea about food and stuff. 
Like it really is mind boggling when you think about all of the ceremony that used to go behind the food and how much that the 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 animal that they killed, how much like they didn't waste it. And like people ate everything. And um I remember even in school learning about like with the Eskimos and the uh, the whales, which I always felt like I think I'm from one of those kinds of tribes. Um but the the thing with the whales and it, it was just so much more respect. They didn't just, you know, just slaughter things and just waste it. There's so much waste and there's so much acceptance of waste. And people just really feel like, you know, just pull up to Whole Foods, go in and they don't have any part of the murder of the animal, but there's just this nonstop consumption. So it's no wonder it's all going to turn toxic and it's got fucking worms crawling out of it on the goddamn shelves and stuff. Like, it's disgusting. Some of the videos I've seen, oh my God. So, oh my gosh, some of the videos of like the fast food places too. Like, ugh. The whole food thing has definitely fallen apart. But it is for humanity, like everybody needs to reevaluate. And and that's why you can't just have somebody push it on you. Well, you got to be vegan. You just have to be vegan. That's all there is to it. No, you have to work that through in your mind. You have to go through the steps to get where it is that you want to be. And, and then there's another thing, too, with all the berries. I, I guess all the berries, the strawberries, the raspberries, the blueberries, the uh, blackberries, all of the different berries. And I got these giant grapes, and I keep pulling them apart looking for worms. But they're all full of bugs and worms. So, and then people eat those, just pop them in their mouth all day long, raw. Nobody is cooking them. And they're eating all these worms and larvae and stuff. And I don't know when they deplete our system so much of um, its own ability to protect itself. We get overrun by all these, you know, most of it I think is microscopic bacteria kind of more. But still, it is, um, you know, we're still getting overrun. And it beats us down. It makes us weak. It makes you get sick more. It makes other depletions. And... <clears throat> Okay, wait a second, because I have a bunch of things coming in my head all of a sudden. Uh, okay, I think I've finished about... Um, There's it, just this, like, in the two different models that we have going, and we have the ones who are, you know, go with aging, love aging, love your aging and stuff. And, um, you know, they're all into you know, fitting in society still, you know, you need to get extensions and all that stuff. Uh, wear a lot of makeup, so toxic and, um, get, uh, get, uh, the shots in your face, whatever those things are called. Um, what is that stuff called? The, the is it was pushed so hard on ho in Hollywood and then everybody else wants it. Oh, they look good. Really? Um, so they all go get um, these fillers. And at the same time, is I'm seeing all these videos that are saying, like, people are getting this stuff and getting it at young ages. And they, they, they don't even realize what is going to happen. And they've already got some outcomes and stuff. It's not good. Like, it is going to make, like, where they think, like, they're looking so good when they're 25, 30 years old. It's like, dang, you should just, like, wait some time. They're going and getting all these injections because they're all in fear of getting older. It's like, dude, there is no getting, I mean, you can get older, but you don't have to age. You have to take care of yourself. But they're going the other route. They're going the artificial way, trying to protect themselves so they don't have to go into some hideous old person. And the, um... But that's what they're going to create is something about when they're doing this, it makes all of this, uh, this, all of this stuff like fall and go. And so they're getting these big droopy, I don't know, it's a whole fucking thing. And all of these different places, plus the, um, the stuff with the fillers and the face cancers. So they're not all seeing that. And it's like this whole group of people who's just lapping it up as fast as they can. 
videos all day long. Everybody's just all into this fake, phony stuff. These chemicals and jet, like it's crazy. And um, so you have that group going in that direction. And then the other group, like, and I'm in this direction where it's like detox, get rid of all that stuff. Just learn to love yourself. Learn how to not care, not care about what the trends are, not care what everybody else's hair is like, not care what everybody else is wearing, what kind of shoes everybody's wearing. Just, you know, wear what is good for you. Wear what's comfortable to you. And then, um, and then learn how to eat that is uh, more holistic for you, more um, natural. Like, everybody's got to do it at their own rate. Is there so many people, confirmation, There's so many people who don't even know how to um, cook. So they're just rely on other people making their food for them. That's why there's all this has got to blow up in their faces because it's got to push people to be more independent. People have got to learn how to get in there and grow some food, you know, be a part of what they consume. And it's like all out of balance. They just think like because they go to work and they make money that they can just consume whatever. But it's like it's just all out of balance. Like in the corporation and everything's out of whack. There's no harmony. So everything is trying to pull back into harmony. So all the things that are out of balance have got to fall apart. And food is a big one. And the consumption and what people consume, how they look at it. But it's so variable, and it is based so much in your DNA. And so each person has their own journey towards what it is, you know, that they feel comfortable eating. And it's like, you know, I mean, there could still be people who continue to eat animals for a while. It, you know, I don't know that everybody's all of a sudden going to stop eating animals, but it's once that it clicks in for somebody like, and, it, and it's all different things. Like, I knew somebody who got a cow. They thought they were getting the cow for slaughter. But then when they would go out and feed the cow and take care of the cow, they realized that the cow had a personality. It, they built a relationship with it, and they stopped eating meat altogether. So those things, you know, can happen too. Or somebody can go out and go hunting and then have a really religious experience out there that changes their whole perspective. So <clears throat> that's the universe and the soul working together. That isn't something for us to sit back in judgment and commentate and tell them when they should do it and how they should do it and where they should do it. No, that's not our business. And that's why when you have some of these people pushing and pushing, well, you have to do this, you have to do that. That's part of their programming is when you get into understanding more about this, the soul's journey, we're all on different steps. We're all in different areas. We're all on different vibrations. We're not all doing the same thing. We're not all meant to be doing the same thing. We're all at different levels. We're at different levels of learning and understanding. And so it's, you know, focus on what yours is, not what somebody is trying to tell you. That's what we're breaking free from. We've been under this control of t people telling us who we are, what we are, where we are, what we're doing, what we need to be doing, how we need to behave, everything. And so that is, uh, you know, for each person to kind of stand up and go like, wait a minute, I don't, I don't, I don't think that way. Like, that was one thing that, you know, came in hard on me was um, once I started saying that they were lying about Trump, that's all I had to say, we were lying about him. Um, on the news and all of a sudden I was a racist I was a, I mean it was crazy that is so much in the programming it's like how did I all of a sudden become all those things and it's not something that just is like a one time thing no it's something that you will argue like it's still years and I'm still looked at in this certain way of like I'm some sort of a race and then they're pushing so hard on that too the anti thing because uh, because it's all blowing up in their faces. And so they've got to figure out a way to shut it down, shut us all up. <clears throat> and I guess Kanye's coming out harder, too, on um, Kim. He's releasing some sort of videos or audios or something. Like, there's going to be so much of these people. 
And the same kind of crimes that they were doing, trying to do blackmail and stuff, it's going to all blow up in their faces. And um, that's that's the way the universe works, you know. And, and I, I don't know if there's some of these people that are just so, like, have no spiritual side to them, no soul connection. So they just thought that they could do whatever they want and get away with it. But that's not the way the universe works at all. And so, yeah, and this repercussions is going to come in. It's going to come in hard and it's going to come in um, public. Like all these public figures are going to have very public, uh, you know, it's going to be a show. And so, the, um, what were they going to say? Because, um, because to me, it's, it's still... It was everything is going to be switching. I just saw a guy who was talking about this pole shift and he was talking all about this electromagnetic stuff, which I liked his video. But then um, he starts saying, We're going into the dark ages. It's the end of the, you know, it's like the end. And, I, and see, that's the thing is like, I think that there's going to be a lot of storms and, you know, there's going to be some devastation. Like, there's going to be things that are going to happen. Like there's floods in Texas or bad floods. There's all sorts of things that keep happening. But there's going to be things that, uh, like the earthquake in California is going to move a bunch of people. And that earthquake, I think if they start doing that other fault line, I think that it goes up through Arizona and Nevada too. If it's that one where a lot of people were seeing like that it was going to split. And we were going to have this big giant split. And that's the one that would come up here into the Cascadia. That's the Cascadia fault line. And I've heard that one's going to be the big drama. Not just the San Andreas. I think the San Andreas, maybe that's where it's going to fall off. And um, I don't know. I'm sure the scientists know way more than they're telling us. Like it was um, this one guy who was doing this video said that there's all these aurora boil, aurora, the roars are all over the place, and they're not talking about it anywhere on the news. And he was talking about that being part of the pole shift and stuff. But the thing about the pole shift is it's the energy. It's like, yeah, there's going to be changes on the planet, but it is the energy on the planet that's changing. It's purging out all of this darkness. And that is lifting up, letting, getting all the darkness out. Like, if people who can't get rid of their darkness... You know, they they won't be able to go forward. You can't, you know, you can't just carry your darkness. I don't know for how long. I mean, at some point. Um, but at some point, yeah, you get. I think you get chances to work on yourself. Like, I think that is going to be, once something goes down, that is going to be such a huge thing. Like, healing is going to be the trend. <laughs> Everybody is going to be, because there's going to be people who have healed and are feeling better and then it's going to show other people like you can get this too you can feel better too so it's going to be a huge trend on healing but whatever this stuff is leading to it is going to be a lot of drama there is going to be stuff that is going to fall apart on the planet like the landscape's going to change but i think we're going to move in more and you know go into safer places People will start building communities, like, uh, and then, the, you know, there will be introductions into more with technology. And it may go, kind of go slow a little, uh, not super slow, but not overwhelm us because there's so much and it's all been held back from us. And so it's this big, you know, this quantum leap that we're going to take into technology. But so it might go kind of slow of, uh, um, you know, introduce this, introduce that, but there's still going to be this constant of changing. Like I think our way, our houses and stuff are going to be, are going to be different. Um, oh yeah. What well, this woman, this was sad. sad. This happened to my brother too, though, <clears throat> but he was on vacation and came home and something happened with the toilet upstairs and it was running the whole time and flooded his whole house and his when they came home the upstairs was in the downstairs and so this woman she just went to the store or something and she came home and her upstairs was in the downstairs in the kitchen and the toilet had been running upstairs flooded the whole upstairs 
you know, ruined the floor all the way through to where the ceiling, everything from the upstairs crashed down into the downstairs all uh, over in her kitchen. And my brother's was the whole house, but her, she was only gone for a while. And, um, and, and then she was also showing these other walls and how the walls, it almost looked like plastic or something. The way that the water was making the paint, it was weird looking. And I, all I could see was like, look at how shitty our houses are made. Like seriously, you have a fucking flood. You go to the store, you come home and your goddamn fucking upstairs is in your downstairs. <clears throat> and then you got walls over here that are just like buckling. Like, is, um, I don't know. Uh, I think that there is, you know, there's a reason why there's so much loss of houses, you know, and it's partly because people have got to let go of that. And, uh, you know, they have to go through the experience of loss. And it leads to a sense of appreciation, see. Is, um, I was thinking about that, too. I was thinking about something. I was thinking, man, it really, you know, when you go for so long without something, it really creates you to really appreciate it once you get it. And I think there's going to be such an appreciation of some of this stuff when we finally get there. But right now, you know, we're in this time of loss, of losing all these different things and losing houses, losing communities, losing community leaders. Boy, they're going down by the fucking... They're going all over the place down. Um, but all that stuff is going to keep playing out. They're going to keep showing all these people, all these criminals. Because that's what this all this show is about. To get people to realize, like, well, we've been under a criminal enterprise. We've been controlled and manipulated. And at the same time, we've got all these changes that are going to be happening. But don't get caught up listening to these people who all think it's all going to be bad. It's all going to be bad. Is that I don't I don't see it that way, and I don't think, you know, I, I don't know, because like, I would definitely say I see more of like the Adam and Eve project thing, but I don't think like that they're gonna just take some people who see the future and then take them to go start the future. That's all about control again. We're breaking free from control. We're breaking into creation creating our own lives creating our own opportunities creating our own experiences and so and it's by going and releasing this trap that you have developed into this 3d realm and releasing that and going into this other sense where you can follow your dreams and get you know, this other kind of life experience. And that's the one, you know, that you have to heal to get into where you are directing yourself. <clears throat> because there's a lot of stuff to heal. Leaving the 3D, the parts of you that you create to be accepted by society. Because it's all fucking fake. And so it's all these parts that you gotta let go of. And then you got to ask yourself, like, why was I doing this? Why was I doing that? Why am I trying to please these people? Why am I trying to please people I don't even know? <clears throat> That's the thing. Like, just like wearing the fucking uh, underwear, uh, the butt underwear thing. It's like, why? Like, even when you think about, like, all these girls wearing these really low-cut pants and then wearing their G-string way up above. Because it was not just young girls doing it. It was grown ass women doing it and um, wearing those up above. Like, what are we just all like just going out? Like, we all just want to look like sex workers or something. Like, it's all just like, look at look at me as a sex, a sex object. Just look at me as a sex object. And then we want to wonder, like, why men aren't giving us respect. It's like, well, we got to start demanding it. Like going out and showing our underwear and our butt crack. I don't think that that's really... You know, be saying, hey, I deserve respect. I think that's, you know, we have to do some changing. It's like what that guy was saying. Women have to, you know, realize that they're also the bad guys. They're also causing problems. <clears throat> and they just want to turn around and blame it on some man. It's like, no, we all have issues. We all have things where we're out of balance. 
can't just say, oh, it's just men. It's just women. Just pick a bear. It's like, no, you have to, there keeps being noises in there where I keep feeling like I'm going to go in there and there's some little creature or something. I don't know what keeps making the noises. Um, but anyways, um, but that is where, you know, women have to start going back to self-respect, not just putting it all out there, trying to get somebody to like them. It's like, is that really the kind of like you want? Don't you want somebody to like you for who you are on the inside, for your great mind, for your kind heart? You just want somebody to lust after your fine ass and that's, that's enough. That's enough for you. And that is where we're, that has been enough for women for a long time. And it's taken a lot for women to see like, just because somebody thinks you're attractive doesn't mean that they like you <laughs> at all. And that is, um, you know, big lessons that people have to go through. And men are going through it too. I mean, men have had the same thing. You know, we've all been stuck in this shallow world and we've all been superficial and, you know, so it's time for us to become deeper and more caring and more compassionate and not so flimsy and desperate because that's what our society had become, fragile, desperate, f totally flimsy. And, um, you know, I have a bunch of different people who I've seen on there coming into my head. And, uh, anyways, it just is, you know, it's time for us to go in a new direction. And any of us that can see the direction is to just lead the way and don't, you know, you can't worry about what other people don't see yet. Cause they're just trying to, they're still thinking through the matrix. Like there's so many people who think like that they're doing the right thing on the aging. It's like, you're going, you're playing their program. You're just playing right into all their programs. So... It was, you know, all, all you had to do is just start noticing the programs and how they work and then pulling yourself free from them. You know, that's my advice. And don't forget that you got to love yourself, <laughs> you gotta love everyone, and you got to have a loving day. It's up to you. So have a loving day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.